Hello everyone, I hope you guys are doing well. And today in the studio we have Milo with Assault. So welcome Milo, how are you today? Thanks, thanks for having me on. Good morning for yeah. you, good afternoon. Oh wait, no, good morning for us, good afternoon for you. I haven't had enough coffee yes, yet. Yes, yeah. <laughs> right, all right, so Milo, my first question to you is, how did Assault come to be? Like what? what is your background? What what led you to this point? What led you to today and being on here? Sure. Well, I mean, I've been interested in blockchain and crypto for, you know, five, six years now. I'm a huge believer in, you know, decentralization and how various sort of industries and sectors can benefit from its use. Now, you know, some really interesting stats and especially with the rise of COVID and, you know, physical cash is on, a, on, the, on the demise you know, um, in terms of its circulation. So it's important okay. that, and that takes up a lot of um, charities, um, sort of medium of fundraising income stream, whether it is from you know, dropping in some tins or from other ways of it sort of getting transferred. Um, and as we move into more digital age, um, you know, online fundraising, whether uh, it's like the key um, medium for how charities make their money at the moment or fundraising streams and you know crypto users is on the rise as well and so it's just so important that they are positioned to be able to accept crypto donations um, and obviously intertwine that with you know nfts and be able to use that for their uh, income and so asphalt sort of came about as a you know a key reason for charities to sort of get involved and use that um, and i sort of worked in real estate before aiding sort of you know social tenants getting you know housing for affordability in the city in london so it seemed like a perfect way and I was just, you know, keen to just get it on with and, you know, you know work with, the, with my team and we got a go. I think this is great. So this is, um, you know, I'm a big fan of NFTs for a cause. We were talking a little bit uh, yeah. prior to going going live here. Um, the Walk us through the process, though. So I'm a, a charity. I, I come to you. I sign up. I don't think it costs anything, right, for the charity itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 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 the, the charity comes on board and they can you know use the platform. Talk to me about the NFTs. How do the NFTs get generated? What what what's the appearance? What do we expect there? If I donate more, right. is it going to be different? Um, and then what can I do with that NFT as I contribute? Yeah, so that's that's the key point. So we're trying to make it really visual based and sort of being a bridge between you know charity art and blockchain, <laughs> charity art and blockchain. So what we, how we make the NFT is we take the display image of the campaign. So it isn't just a normal landing page for you know charity just to accept donations. You know stuff like that already exists. And, you know there's so much more you can do with you know blockchain. Um, and so we're making it quite you know campaign focused and art focused. So we take the display image of the campaign and we input various um, overlays. Uh, we use CNN, which is convolutional neural networks to sort of mm -hmm. teach AI to draw like other inputs and artists um, and we make each one unique now this sort of makes it a personal donation certificate uh, while also being a tradable non-fungible token which shows that you participated in a certain campaign um, each campaign is uh, limited to about 10,000 non-fungible tokens mm -hmm. um, so each one is a collection of its own and you know you don't just think of it, think of it as you know minting an nft from a collection while also donating to it um, and that's the sort of key thing we're trying to get across um, and you know the community are very chuffed with it, charities are looking forward to doing it as well um, and charity, uh, users can also uh, sell NFTs on behalf of campaigns to aid any fundraising uh, goals as well. Um, so oh nice. Really, uh, it's, you know, it's a call to action, you know, we're using non-fungible tokens, doing the whole climate forward uh, mm -hmm. aspect that um, Algorand provides. And it's, just, it's a perfect sort of blockchain for that um, to help us do that. Okay, I've got two two more questions, and I'm sure Lauren wants to jump in too. But I but I call dibs. So first question: um, If I am a you know if I'm a charity that rescues dogs, let's say, mm -hmm. do I ha need to have an artist on staff before I come to you to support some type of a you know base artwork? No. That's so the, uh, yeah, so it's a good question. But the image that you use doesn't have to be an artistic render. Or a digital piece of art, it can actually be a, you know, a real life, high resolution picture depicting your campaign. 
you know, there is that, you know, phrase that, you know, a picture tells a thousand words or whatever, you know, and we're really trying to get that across and the whole site, we're trying to get te- away from text and make it much more visual based. Um, so you don't need a, you know, you don't need any really creative input, creative design, get a good picture what depicts your campaign. Uh, and that will be the figurehead of your uh, campaigns and you can list as many as you want various categories to help users navigate throughout the site. We've got a homepage, I've uh, got a ranking system as well, so users can see over the past seven days which charities and which campaigns have done well. Um, all really to aid the um, you know, navigation around the platform, so it isn't purely charities worrying about having to buy crypto. They don't need to buy that, they don't need to make any, any NFTs if they don't want to. Um, users can you know, sell NFTs on behalf of them to aid any campaigns that they've got going on. So it's um, it, we're really trying to take out any you know co- connotations around blockchain or Web three for a charity to make the onboarding really seamless. Um, Excellent. And that's what the content sort of displays. I think that, that's that that was the answer I was hoping for. Second question. Um, so. We as a team, the Crypto Nerd team, have actually produced some NFTs for a charity. So we raised um, funds for uh, Team C's. Um, currently, we have another project that we're raising uh, funds for to go blockchain um, carbon negative uh, to support uh, the you know big dolphins in the Amazon. We've got this whole thing going on. Could other you know um, presences or NFT artists out there incorporate their artwork with your platform as well? Is there any other way for you know for 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 an artist to come at it from that direction instead of from the the um, you know the nonprofit agency, or can they collaborate exactly. somehow? Yeah, very very easy. I mean, it's a charity sort of focused um, marketplace, uh, and it's not just sort of charities. It's anyone you know anyone can sort of raise you know if it's you know if you've got a you're raising for some surgery or whatever. You know, personal fundraising campaigns can also be launched in the platform. But um, yeah, I mean, if you have a campaign or you've got a, a charity you want to raise for, you want to re- release your own NFTs on behalf of you know X charity. As long as they're listed on the platform, you can go right ahead and do that within seconds, um, and you know display it around your platform to aid any you know raising the call to action to auction off anything on the platform, uh, as opposed to having to sort of navigate with various platforms and various parties. You know, we sort of create a hub for that, um, and you can sort of when you uh, have a, an NFT or you know if you have a campaign. You can sort mm-hmm. of just select which charity on the platform you wish X proceeds to go to, and you know it's straight away. Okay, fantastic. Okay, cool. This I stole your question. Yeah, I stole your question, Lauren. Go ahead. Okay, so I was just wondering, um, what charities have you guys worked with so far? So at the moment, we're doing our onboarding. So we've got various animal charities currently listed. Um, there is, we had some things with our sign up that we were working on. Um, but we've got some pretty big ones that we're trying to land um, to get on board at the moment. Um, so it's, it's looking, it was, it's looking which after that at the moment, the, uh, the, the feedback has been great. Yeah, I okay. would imagine so. Yeah. Awesome. How do you anticipate um, Assault to grow? Like in the next 10 years, where do you, where do you see it going? Yeah, sorry. So yeah, we want it to be the the place for all online fundraising, especially you know various sort of subsectors of it will be for charitable donations, especially as the you know this whole move towards climate forward thinking um, away from you know non renewables and a, a much more you know as the wealth divide gets bigger, it's important that there are platforms to help you know crypto be used as a social good to aid everyone. And, you know, at the lower sort of areas and in the deprived areas. So it will work for that, but also the marketplace, the virtual marketplace for, you know, sharing goods. But also one of the last things we're doing is renting non-fungible tokens, um, our, our CNFTs. So mm-hmm. what we're creating is that, you know, you can actually lease out your charity NFT that you got from a campaign uh, and it will yield a return. So what, what basically that does is it just makes it so much more attractive to get involved and hold these tokens and hold these NFTs. Um, and, you know, as you know, a big importance on CSR and, you know, ESGs and having green, being green and everyone you know, doing green investments. This is mm-hmm. the perfect one. Um, and we'll, I think that we'll see that over the next couple of years is, you know, anyone can get involved. There is no reason not to donate, not to support charity with asshole and that's what we're really trying to uh, get across and we're we're encouraging the secondary market via your marketplace because there is a royalty that goes back to the original um nonprofit cause okay and how, how much is that is that royalty has that been defined 
it, it, we don't, we, if we're between three and five percent um, of really too much into, you know, the retail fees or whatever. Um, but it, it, between three and five percent, we think is a fair amount to go back to the original charity. Um, but yeah, so we think that this will be a, quite a nice um, encourage for people to not only list uh, the charity entities that they get, but from the designs that are made, it is, you know, as it's a generative collection that's been created, you're going to see that the AI will make some truly astounding pieces of art that will have a demand on the secondary market and um, the charities will be compensated for any resales that occur on the platform as well. So that encourages people to then buy secondary stuff, all going back to charity, all aiding um, various, you know, their social and environmental challenges. And um, that's what we're, you know, aiding for. Excellent. All right. I'm going to ask another one, Lauren. I'm going to jump in and then, then I'll let you go. So um, uh, timing. So uh, the timing, uh, like I think you could probably generate the NFTs relatively quickly, but the marketplace yeah. is generally the, the harder thing to put in place. When you launch initially, will that marketplace be already in place or are you going to rely on secondary markets? So, uh, yeah, well, I mean, we're looking to launch early January. Uh, it just depends on the volume of um sort of how many charities we can you know we feel as is enough because we want to be you obviously don't want to have um you know not a lot and you know we're confident mm -hmm. with you know the amount we're growing that it will be a you know a big launch mm -hmm. um the various other administration and stuff but um the the marketplace will probably come slightly after chiefly because we want uh focus to be on supporting channel uh charities directly in the first sort of instance as opposed to relying on any secondary Right. Uh, market resales um, because obviously the charity will get the majority of the money but that would then uh, probably the marketplace would come quite uh, soonly uh, after um, okay. in terms of what we've done already the smart contracts are all done we're currently just tweaking some of the design stuff uh, and some extra front end uh, sort of tweaks but we're pretty much ready to launch mm, that's great okay cool Lauren? My question's a little bit more personal. Um, I'm all about being authentic with your audience uh, and your supporters. So I was just wondering, you know, obviously you have a kind heart. You want to help out, you know, as many people as possible, as many different charities as possible, whoever is wanting to sign up on your platform. But if you could only choose one charity to work with, who, who would it be? Like if you you had the power to reach out to that charity or maybe they reach out to you, who would you hope that you have, charity? You have is? a personal favorite, I guess. Huh? Okay. Yeah. That, that's a good one. Um, I, I'm a big I'm a big, I'm, I'm I'm big in my history uh, <laughs> in terms of what I do like, outside of the uh, I, so maybe like preserving ancient you know artifacts and history. I love endangered animals. Um, I think that's a key one. Um, yeah, and uh, there was uh, some. Uh, Golf charities that work with veterans uh, is very interesting to me, and I think it's a it's a great That's thing cool. to, uh, to do. But uh, yeah, we're, 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 we're always on the uh, the outreach for new charities. Excellent. Cool. Okay, I feel like I'm I feel like I'm I'm repping the Gowana brand. Speaking of NFTs, like particularly hard today, but just to clarify, we're not sponsored by Gowana in any way, shape, or form. I just happen to be wearing the hoodie, the heat, the hats in the background. Yeah, I was like, the and, hat and, is and, I'm, and I'm drooping out of out of the mug. <laughs> Uh, just, oh my god! Just a fan of NFTs, apparently. Um, so uh, the name. Let's talk about the name. So the name yeah. doesn't mention NFTs at all. It's A S A L P, which stands for um, Algorand Standardized Asset um, Launchpad. Yeah. So, yeah. is there an ASA Launchpad embedded in here somewhere? We haven't talked about any ASA ASAs. Is there one coming for you? Well, yeah, we will. Be, uh, I mean, Algorand stands. That asset is uh, what this sort of abbreviation stands for now. ASOP on its own is quite a nice sort of you know, environmental sort of phrase word. I think it fits quite nicely with our concept and climate forward thinking. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, we're essentially, we're committed to you know propelling ASAs out into the ecosystem. Uh, and there's various updates that we're going to be bringing in. Uh, our tokenomics model as well. We're very interested with um, you know after seeing our grand governance model. Um, you know it, it is the key thing for decentralized projects to have. A governance model, you know, putting back the um, the community into the hands of controlling what goes onto the site. So maybe you know, asset holder tokens can have a say of what charities get listed, uh, a more say about fee structure, uh, the ones that go promoted on the homepage. You know, really putting it back into the community um, because that's what Web three is all about. You know, 
mm-hmm. Web 2, you know, the, the tech giants hold all your information, hold all the power, but now with Web 3, it goes back into the hands uh, of the people and the users mm-hmm. of the platform, and that's what, you know, I'm, I'm all about and we'll be uh, releasing in the, in the new year. Excellent, yeah. Uh, uh, everything is DAOified. The, the, yeah. the, right, the, the power has, has, you know, reversed flow um, in, yeah. in a significant um, fashion. I think that's exactly. fantastic. All right, so if I understood correctly, so early January, late January, something in January, your your initial launch will will, will happen, and then at some point after that, we'll get some type of um, you know a, a marketplace uh, update. Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. I mean, uh, it will probably follow quite uh, quickly after um, in terms of sort of smart contract. It's it's very um, uh, it's it's very quite similar to already you know it's pretty much already done. That. There's various sort of additional um extra sort of front-end things and tweaks we're going to add into it um also as we are you know pretty much really making uh, generative art we're going to host generative art collections users can also just create uh, generative um uh, projects and collections in seconds as well um so we you know we want to facilitate that um, you can see i've I, I brought brought up your uh, your home page here so it's uh, asop.io um so if i go here now um, what primary information, where, where would you want an audience member to go to the, you know, if they're a charity, obviously they could do a charity sign up. Um, if they yeah. go to contact, um, really, I don't think that, 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 I mean, if they want to reach out to you, but really it's just sort of kind of scrolling through and you've got sort of this, um, um, like kind of a, a, a layout here is, you know, step-by-step. Process. Yeah. I mean, that was, that's the key sort of, uh, sort of initial, uh, thing to get over for charities it's you know how do i just make an algorithm wallet uh, address mm-hmm. um it's you yeah, so we've just made it simple you know there's various three wallets you can use uh and that's essentially all you really need to do anything on the platform and then it's very much sort of you know standard form filling but obviously more interactive just to make it really really simple uh, mm-hmm. for anyone with no blockchain knowledge just to put your campaigns up there um but yeah besides the charities what you'll see is we've got our own personal fundraising ones so you can raise your own, let's for example, you're running a marathon or for surgery, or if you want to do your own, you know, walk for a campaign on the platform, you can mm-hmm. do so too. And uh, um, it will be sort of various sort of fractionalized um, campaigns where um, you can donate a bit to this one, a bit to this one, a bit to that one, um, in your own name. Uh, so Excellent. that's the update. And we could donate in um, Algo or Algo and USDC? Yeah, so Algo and USDC. Um, now, it's obviously with Algo, you have the charity would need to opt in to the ASA uh, in order to that to facilitate the transaction. So mm-hmm. I'm definitely open to you know, yield or you know other coins that uh, donors hold. But that being said, it's primarily up to the um, charity if they want to accept it. But we will facilitate a sort of key uh, to acknowledge that they do accept X, Y, and Z. If you know what I mean. Mm, okay. What's the vetting process like? You know, how do I know that somebody actually needs a surgery? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. But I mean, th- those are the same sort of uh, issues that you have on Web2, you know, uh, about if someone doesn't mm-hmm. actually have one, I guess you have to say that on it. And in terms of vetting charities, we speak out and reach out to uh, representatives to confirm that, you know, they actually are the identity uh, that they say they are. And I guess this is the only sort of centralized aspect of the site, um, but it's it's mainly for you know, user experience and user security when they're navigating the platform. Okay. Did you did you want to jump in there, Lauren? Did I cut you off again? No. Okay. So uh, the next question for me then is, um, how are you going to raise awareness for, I mean, obviously you want charities and, and agencies who are not familiar with blockchain because you've got the, the you know, the, the very basic primer here, how to get a wallet. How are you going to market to those types of charities and get outside of our little bubble here? Yeah, so we're going to be uh, getting bringing some sort of fundraising titans on board with you know decades of experience to aid our onboarding dramatically, dealing with sort of uh, training sessions and awareness about blockchain and Web three and how it's you know, key that they get set up. Um, so we've got a couple of candidates in mind, and that'll be de- aiding the onboarding uh, to specifically bigger sort of you know massive charities who you know do um, sort of continental campaigns because that's you know a key uh mm-hmm. you know people need because obviously they have their own social platforms who will broadcast that they are uh taking you know, donations uh, from us all uh, i'm thinking about widgets various apis uh, plugins 
Um, mm-hmm. It's actually on our website as well to further raise uh, the awareness. But um, yeah, uh, to answer your question. Okay, great. Um, now you're. Question. What, what, but you're obviously like you know paying attention to the the Algorand ecosystem as a, as a whole because you, you know you yeah. mentioned some other ASAs and some other projects there. What other projects are you watching right now? Which which other projects have you like admired you know from afar maybe and, and said well that's, that's they've got something great going on there. Yeah, so um, I'll be honest with you, I'm a massive fan of that high art um, asset backed NFTs. I think is just uh, incredible. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in art. Obviously, you know, you'll, you'll see that trans uh, in the platform as well. But yeah, Opal is uh, you know great as well. Uh, Yearly is a really clever idea as well. You know, aiming early uh, projects in the ecosystem mm-hmm. to have those speaking awards um, and just increasing awareness for upcoming you know algorithm projects. So th- probably those three. Uh, top, uh, but climate trade as well. Uh, very yeah. impressive. Good. I think yeah, we, we've um, we've talked to all those folks. We partnered with climate trade. We, we're I yeah. like the the environmental aspect of the Algram blockchain yeah. in general, um, and yeah. those NFTs for a cause just sort of falls in line with that because I imagine you'll probably get quite a few environmental type of projects that uh, are attracted yeah. to to a platform like this just because of the mm-hmm. nature of the, the of the blockchain itself. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, let, let's let's fast forward in time. We've only got a few more minutes here. Let's fast forward maybe four or five years. You know, what has this evolved into? What what else has, you know, come to fruition that, you know, maybe is just, you know, it seems too far off right now. If you could just think, think you know, uh, I don't know, in, in a grand scheme for a little bit. Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, the, probably the key thing would be to take market share away from other um, sort of donating, facilitating platforms, you know, GoFundMe, just giving, you know, making us all the, the key sort of player, uh, you know, in the metaverse of online donating sphere. Uh, that mm-hmm. would probably be the key one. Various sort of events using charity NFTs as a ticket, you know, that so many sort of scalable things we can do. Games, uh, to, the key thing is just making charity NFTs have more utility in the real world. Um, mm-hmm. Further aid the attraction into not only holding them, but, you know, to keep sharing them, investing in them. Um, and what that does is simultaneously spread awareness about all the, the, the campaigns listed on the platform. Um, because, you know, Algorand is this eco, um, eco blockchain. It's, it's, this sort of fits in line with the ethos of, you know, charities and the sort of the business model that everyone sort of needs to adopt about, you know, no emissions. Um, and so I think in this way, it will become a, a pretty big player in um, sort of taking payments for contributing to campaigns and fundraising. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a great project. Uh, we 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 talk to a lot of folks in the in the community, um, and there are some really cool online like metaverse type auctions and auction houses. And I think that's an event that you know you you could get involved in as well at some point in the future. Uh, I think that I speak for both Lauren and I when I say if uh, if you ever have like an online or a virtual event or if there's a any type of a you know um, I don't know a, an online you know a gathering of some sort uh, we would be happy to volunteer and and help out organize or arrange the you know the the, the conference breakout rooms or speak in any way you know shape or form um, we'd be happy to be involved and and help out and help sponsor some um, you know some nonprofit programs I think that we need more projects like this. In the algorithm yeah. system yeah no that's a great idea yeah thanks for that um i mean we do facilitate auctions of nfts and it, it's the logical extension um to have a you know you, even in the real world you know you've got charity night charity events where i guess mm-hmm. sort of collectors can auction off their own uh non-functional tokens for a cause and it would all be sort of um you know straight to x campaign or whatever yeah um, yeah it, it's a great idea i can imagine some kind of you know virtual gala event where yeah. you know you know from the waist up i'm wearing a tux <laughs> and, and, yeah. and, right and and you know we change the green screen background to a ballroom or something um yeah. you know we can make that uh make it interesting anyway yeah, you could be uh, the right any any other last words maybe anything we forgot to ask you that you want to get you know important information out to the public the algorithm community uh, at large no i mean that's about it that's about it you know probably uh, we covered it all but uh, you know grateful for the uh the community feedback it's been great and um uh, and to algorithm as well you know making it possible all right well sounds good well uh lauren any any other last minute questions from you no we are good I think it's this has been a fantastic interview. We we appreciate your time. I think everybody should go check out uh, also up the the also up that io is the website. Um, real quick, what's your Twitter handle? Uh, Asop underscore io. Mine is uh, Milo Milo P underscore asa. 
uh, SP yeah. on, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the comments. I'd be right. quite used to Twitter. All right, we'll we'll we'll, we'll post it in the uh, in the yeah. In I'll put it in comments. the description box. Perfect. I'll, I'll find it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank Thanks you so everyone much. for watching. It's been a fantastic interview, and I'm looking forward to uh, the next time we get to speak. Of course, definitely. Thanks a lot.